Welcome everyone to another fun DIY PC and such building and tinkering episode. You have seen in my earlier videos we tested this PCIe flex cable thing, which somehow sort of surprisingly actually even worked for our testing. And later, just recently, we got our set to this Razer Core X4 external Thunderbolt PCIe stuff. But certainly this expensive PCIe thing might be too expensive for most at $299. I said multiple times I find it overpriced and you need Thunderbolt obviously for this. While this flexible PCIe cable extender thing you might find still too inflexible as this is hardwired here and cannot just be removed. So today I got something even cheaper and yet slightly more flexible than this. I think this flex cable thing was maybe around 20 bucks plus minus give or take. And this is only 6.99. So this actually is PCIe over USB 3. And of course the advertising is slightly false because it's of course not really USB 3 but just reusing this cable. And I will really be surprised if this works or not or we will see. So first of all I find the price really crazy 6.99. If you buy USB 3 cable alone this might already be 6.99. And then you have all the PCB. So for all the stuff when I say this is too expensive, there you see the pricing, this stuff, $6.99. Crazy. I would not myself want to manufacture this. In my opinion, reasonable price would still be $19.99. Maybe this is new old stock after the mining hype. I think this is mostly intended for massive mining setups, but this doesn't stop us to use this for tinkering with creative case setups and uh, driver development and stuff. So what this is doing, is on this very small PCB thing just via this to this USB cable pins and on this side we will take a look closer at the end if this works on this side just wiring this back here this is not even a bridge or driver chip so this is mostly just going over the USB cable just as I expected for $6.99 anyway just like this is doing but with the difference that this is a flex cable and this is a regular USB cable so let's plug this in here into the Ryzen build and see if this actually works. Of course still using our trusty nearly only PCIe card here, at least more than one anyway. Of course as you see removing and installing is the only drawback of such a small case, but then again still more serviceable than a Mac Mini, obviously, and more flexible. Plug something in and out. Of course, this is just an example. In general, I will use this with other PCIe cards and everything. Then, of course, this just goes in like that. I also find the use of this flexible, pluggable USB cable slightly funny, because in this mining rig, of course, you normally don't change it so this is mostly an added bonus for my debug and testing flexibility so this thing here is a little bit strange not really sh ah okay ah, you can move it like this okay then this goes in like that if you want security you can do that and then of course power which we now need twice for the bridge as well as the card which we probably should have here somewhere. Oh, wait a second, it came. It did not came. Ah, here is some serial ATA. If you don't have a second PCIe power thing there. But certainly, if this is intended for mining, which in general I'm not a fan of mining, then of course you probably need here one of those serial ATA adapters to connect all the power requirements here. And as usual the only other drawback, you need to be a little bit careful here with isolation stuff and uh, plugging it in and out while it's running, uh, always a little bit dangerous with this flying wire setup things. And of course combinable with this PCI bridges for your vintage retro stuff and fun. So will we get post? Of course it's annoying post times, but yes we have signal I think. So this is surprisingly, some of here, sorta, surprisingly even works. Um, yeah, that is um, interesting. 
nearly sort of kind. I did not expect this crazy stuff to work. I would actually be interested if a longer USB cable works. Let's take a meter one and maybe even a five meter one and see how that is going. Okay, so actually this is already a two meter cable. Don't even have something shorter. Let's give that a try. But maybe this is already too long, not really sure what on Linus Tech Tips was working back in the day with their flex extender cable stuff. Uh, wait a second. Oh, you can't use other cables. I just realized this is special snowflake adapter cable with two uh, USB type A and not this other device side cable. So, wow, wow, wow. Hmm. But anyway, still uh, interesting and you could probably theoretically build your own cables then, but this is slightly unexpected that they made this so with two uh, type A or what this is and not type B or whatever. Anyway, so yeah, you can't use another cable unless you buy or build one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, post is mm, medium long whatsoever. But at least it works. Of course this is only PCIe1, one lane here. So how does it work? We will take a closer look in a minute, but this is effectively just routing these PCIe pins through one by one. So there is not much magic, no transmitter, no receiver, no buffer, no bridge, no nothing. I still find it really interesting that you really can do this not only with the flex cable thing we tested earlier, but even this USB 3 cable thing. A pity they use this plugs and jack so that you can't bring your own cable easily, but yeah, that works. One thing I already know I don't really need to test is that the performance at least for video capture will not be amazing because I calculated this another video full HD so many megabyte per second by 30 or 60 frames capturing here on the PCIe cable here is quite some 500 or what it was bandwidth. This is why we found that on the AMD side here with X server OBS streaming with desktop screen capture will not be amazing. But again, the mining stuff runs entirely on the card, so mining and even gaming will be mostly be fine because you don't have this huge bandwidth here on the PCIe cable for uh, all the ongoing video capture, but the games will just load gigabytes of textures into the card and reuse it, so the bandwidth of games will be vastly different than this video capture workload of ours. So yeah, of course not a real benchmark. Benchmark will be PCIe uh, X1. But yeah, let's take a closer look how this works on the signal level. And then at least you know that the 699 stuff works for your debugging, tinkering, creative case mods and whatnot. So how does this work on the wire? Let's take a look how this PCIe looks. PCIe pin out somewhere. Pin out are you something. And here you see the pin out of this pin, so you see mostly 12 volt and so on. Actually, I'm surprised that there's SM bus clock and data. Hmm, interesting. And uh, JTAG, seriously, what? Why would they have JTAG on this pin? That is funny. Vague link reactivation, power good ground. So they mostly have here receiver lane zero and transmitter lane zero. That is all for PCI 1X. And then, of course, 4X are here the same base pins mechanical key and then just more lanes here. Lane 1, lane 2, lane 3 and then 8x of course the same 8 times and 16x of course just the same stuff repeated all over again for 16 times. Let's take a look on the PCB and see what they have done there. Of course as usual wait for your system to power down. Really tempted with this. This is not really hot plug. Obviously uh, not like the Thunderbolt which officially is hot plug so I would not uh, risk destroying here the bus driver stuff with pulling it in and out and stuff while it's running. So on this side here then let's take a closer look. So I hope you can see that they directly connect there just the transceiver lines so like power good and whatnot we take a closer look in a second and I think you can also see that some of those pins are simply not connected like 12 volt lines and whatnot because they have only eight or so pins here and they certainly can only 
connects the most important ones, like the lane one transmitter and receiver and maybe power good and whatnot. And uh, then of course the power is going here on the side port. So here on this board, when we take a closer look, first of all the underside here has some foam stuff for isolation, but it makes it slightly harder, but on this side is not really something there, just ground pattern something whatever. And then on the top side we see, so there's basically not really much going on, just here a couple of pins, eight pins, the lane zero receive transmitter there and then power good and uh, not really much to wire through. They're really simple, only some caps here and diode for the little bit of, uh, actually here's a 1085, could be some linear power regulator maybe for some 5 volt or whatever, interesting. Anyway, here, yeah, so completely low-tech solution and I mean, the price is hilarious, $6.99 for that price, you don't want to manufacture this. This is funny, they don't even have contacts here in the end and not even metal pins in here. Apparently you can order then this cheap connectors. I also wonder why they even bother with this 16x connector here and not just have an uh, actually 1x, slightly funny, hmm, whatever. But yeah, not even pins in there. And as you can see there right here, PCIe 1x to 16x, which is of course hilarious marketing lie. Maybe they really only write this here for marketing reasons and have the 16x connector here only for uneducated people to think it accelerates this to 16x. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed this little episode here, this little look on esoteric hardware that you can find on the interwebs. And uh, I hope you learned something. And uh, yeah, don't let marketing stuff trick you into thinking this is 16x. Of course, not always apply some common sense and what is even technically possible with this eight pins here on USB. So yeah, I hope you learned something and I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.